Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon for um, this, this demonstration and sort of an introduction to security awareness and, and fishing simulation. Um, just for, you know, we, we expect this to be 40 minutes, um, certainly won't be any longer than, than 45 minutes. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll give you an introduction really into the reasons why you know this is such an important um, area to help you um, protect your businesses ultimately um, and then to, to, to sort of provide you an insight and a, and a sort of demonstration really of the platform which is really the you know the, the bits we're, we're keen to show because it's, it's difficult to I guess articulate and, and explain what you know how, how good the platform is um, until you've actually seen it so Okay, so let me um, just introduce um, myself um, and I have with us today, um, Jordan. Um, so some of you I know um, will know me. Um, my name is Graham Stead, so I'm the Client Relationship Director here at CMI. Um, and ultimately my responsibility within the business is to keep um, you know, our clients um, informed really of, of how technology can, can help your business. So running yeah, webinars like this is, is, a, is an important part of what I do. Um, and I'm pleased to introduce Jordan. Um, Jordan is our um, Plant Success Manager at InfoSec, which is the partner that we've been working with now for, I think probably getting on two and a half, if not pushing three years. Um, been a great relationship um, and been great to work with Jordan. So Jordan, I think you want a couple of words to introduce yourself. Yeah. I appreciate that, Graham. Um, and for everybody on the line, uh, as Graham had mentioned, my name is Jordan Phillip. i um, been working with new CMI for the past three years about, um, and really here to help the partnership uh, to ensure that you know our programs uh, that I'll be running through today run smooth with all of the individual clients. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Okay, so um, let's, let's move on. Um, I, I like to sort of with these sessions just make sure we we set the scene really. Um, and for those of you been on the webinars we we've we've run over the past few months, I typically have two two objectives um, that I like to do. I'm going to do a bit something a bit different here, and I because I just think it's really important that um, we really set the scene and really understand why this is so important. Um, so ultimately, from um, from CMI's perspective, you know, our purpose really, you know, what, why we exist is to is to have a positive impact on your business. Um, you know, that's that's why we exist, and and we just happen to be, we believe we're experts in technology. Um, so that's how we have the positive impact. Um, and you know, there's a number of ways in which we we do that. Um, and you know, some are really obvious, um, some less so. But really, this session is around the area really of really reducing your your risk um, and security awareness, and and efficient simulation is a is a key part of that. So, you know, the, the people, you know, your staff, your employees within your business are really one of the most um, effective measures that um, we have as your IT experts uh, to keep you protected, to keep your business protected. Um, and it's, it's really important, therefore, that we, you know, we educate and inform not only you, but, but, but your, your staff um, as to, you know how how they can help protect themselves um from from your perspective you know most of you that are on um, the call today and we've got many of our clients but we've also got businesses that um i guess we hope will become our clients in the future um is is really to be um i guess to some extent to provoke you a little bit if i'm honest and um, to make you think what if um you know we we have in round numbers we support as a business about ten thousand um users um and to give you some idea we currently have probably 1500 pushing 2000 of those users running through some form of um security awareness fishing simulation that's you know, round numbers 15 20 percent um so the reason i'm sort of putting that stat out there is that actually what that means is that 80 percent of our clients the users are not taking up this education um, they're not taking the point and the effort to, to educate their staff about the risks. Now we see as you know as the you know the, the the team, the department running the service desk and providing service, we see the consequences of that. Um, and it's surprisingly regular how we see, you know, how often we see those consequences. I, I can think within the last six weeks, maybe two months, um, of three specific examples. And you know, I won't go into the detail of the story, but um, 
probably about six weeks ago, you know, what one of our clients became aware of um, an issue um, that had come about through their, you know, one of their staff members. Um, but over the previous couple of weeks, a number of things have been happening. They weren't aware. Um, and, and that business it actually cost them about £30,000. And how was that done? That was just done through, um, after it came through phishing, um, and a number of um, transactions were made um, and they got access to the system through the phishing. So this really is, um, you know, a, a critical thing that we have to do. And coming back to those numbers, 80% of, 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 I guess, of our clients, um, and I think it, in fairness, that's the, the general um, business community, are not taking the steps they need to take in order to um, protect their business. So, you know, coming back to this session, it is about educating you, it is about informing you, it is about provoking you, making you think the what if. Um, the ultimate outcome is to provide you with the solution that helps you fulfill your responsibility to protect yourself and your business. We, we are there to, to help you and inform you and ultimately take the decision to put the protection in place. It then becomes our responsibility to, to deliver that service to you. But we can't unfortunately make you take this service you know we can as the phrase go we you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink it um so i'm going to come back to that work i am trying to provoke you into thinking about you know what if this happens if you are the person within your business responsible for you know it and the security um then you know what happens if there's there's a breach who are you going to have to report to who are you going to have to explain what happened who are you going to have to um, justify why these decisions weren't taken to put this um security in place so look, i'm gonna get off my soapbox now you can tell i feel fairly sort of passionate about um and frustrated ultimately about why we struggle to get our clients to to take some of this service on so you know Next, next slide here really is, you know, why is why is this so important? Um, is cybercrime really really that important? Yeah, we hear a lot about it in in the media um, coverage, etc. Maybe some big stories that that hit the press with some big corporates. We will hear about, um, but you know, this is really intended to show, you know, that there's always a consequence of of something good. You know, it's it's the the yin, yin and yang. Um, you know, if we go back to the industrial revolution. It, it was it was great. For the world then and, and and for the outcome of that and how it moved um you know things forward but the consequence of that was pollution and you know the the mirror to that really in the modern era is that we have you know the digital revolution you know the the, the computing that we that we that we have now and, and and we really are in reality in the early days of, of that but the consequence of that is cybercrime um you know we have so much data now that is stored you know on the internet somewhere um that actually protecting the risk protecting the access to that um and the the wealth of that how that can be manipulated um you know that's really what's triggered uh cybercrime so you know it, you know it, it having technology is a good thing but that there really always is a downside just as there is to you know everything that, that has a good side there is typically a, a downside some quick stats again, you know, I mentioned a second ago that, you know, we're probably familiar with some some big stories that, that we've heard, some big corporates, you know, those things that make, you know, make the headlines. Um, but, you know, this this really is something, you know, it can happen to you. When I asked you the question earlier, what if, I'm not asking that necessarily out of, you know, fear. Um, I really are trying to make you realise that this does happen to you know small mid-sized businesses you don't have to be a corporate you don't have to be a well-known brand in order to be um, the target so i'm not going to go through um all of these stats here um you know the, the story talks for itself pick a couple out maybe um 71 percent of cyber attack cyber attacks do target you know smbs as we call it as the government calls them you know small mid-sized businesses um 91% if we look over to the right of cyber attacks start with a phishing email that really does hone in where we're at so nearly all of the cyber attacks that we see start somehow with a phishing email now that may not be that um, somebody gets phished now for example and an hour later something happens somebody can get fished and it could be months later that actually the you know, the the the, the payload um, or the consequence of that fishing um, comes comes to light, and the and the 
bottom story there, Aaron Brewery, really just, I mean, this is probably the see it for yourself there, the date, you know, getting on a, a couple of years old now, um, taking it from a deck that, that I've, I ran earlier um, last year. It's still a valid story in the fact that this was a business that was 17 staff. Um, and as a result of a ransomware attack that started with a phishing email, um, they you know, had massive disruption to the business. And you can see there in the headline, um, lost three months of data um, from, from, from their systems. Now, some businesses, maybe that's less impactful, but to most businesses, um, I think it's fair to say that losing three months of data, um, if, if not more, is, is a critical issue um, that can seriously jeopardize um, that business. And of course, these days, you know, we, we have an environment that's massively changing. Um, even before COVID, um, you know, has, has hit us, uh, we, we were clearly seeing, you know, a change in how technology was, was consumed, um, how businesses were using that. How, um, how how much more we were sort of in in remote locations, and I'm not necessarily talking about um, you know remote from a home working perspective, but working from you know what I would call international SMBs from you know across the globe, from partner sites, from suppliers, um, from coffee shops. You know, it, it was a very mobile workforce that we were we were moving. So, you know, we have to from an IT perspective, um, you know, it, it 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 holds the business together from as far as you know the the data our systems our finances our crms our erp systems you know all sit on that that infrastructure that it infrastructure and we've got to keep our staff connected to that um, and to keep them productive um, and you know we have to as an it function make sure we're facilitating that out to to the departments within the business you know it's no longer appropriate for it to turn around and say no you have to have this and you can only access it from here etc cetera, etc cetera. that just doesn't work for a for a modern business to be competitive these days so the environment is changing and of course you know i think it, we're, we're all completely aware that what's happening um you know still happening ultimately but certainly the last three four months you know being forced to remote work um really has opened up our eyes to actually you know what we, this, this can happen. Um, do we really need our offices? Um, all those questions I'm sure we're all asking at the moment. Um, all that is doing is making making our you know our staff and our workforce you know much more um, you know spread um, across the locations from which they're trying to access. So you know that in itself causes a security challenge. Um, it, it opens up more um, weaknesses, more ways to access, um, and, and ultimately it makes it so much more important. But we're keeping our, our staff aware. So why is security awareness important? Again, just to just to cover a couple of things here now, you know, you may or may not be familiar with the National Cyber Security Centre, um, you know, central organization um, set up from you know governments, part of GCHQ. Um, ultimately it was set up by the government a number of years back to look after um, the interests of you know UK PLC um, from a cyber security perspective um, you know it, it is about making sure that we have and again you've got some examples here you know BA Marriott Uber these are all high level big brand um, corporates that um, have been attacked, have been victims, and, and we will have been aware of at the time. Maybe some we've forgotten about. Um, in the Marriott one, I think, was last year or something early this year. Um, but you know, these are these are targeted at, at the smaller criminals. And in fact, um, the smaller businesses are to some extent the easier and the more lucrative targets. And what I mean by that, easier because they typically don't have the protection in place. Um, and more lucrative because um, when when a business becomes a victim, you know they may report it to the you know to the police to the to the relevant authorities, but because of the size, um, there just aren't the resources to investigate it. Whereas something like a BA or a Marriott, you know, it it becomes a lot more high profile um, and much more important. Dare I say it, that it's looked into. So it becomes a lot harder for. Um, a cyber criminal, I guess, to get caught when they're targeting SMBs than the risk of getting caught when they're targeting the big corporates. So you start there, you know, there is actually a one in two chance that you experience a cybersecurity breach today. Now we've got about 40 people on this call today, 40 clients, um, businesses. So, you know, 20 of you by that stat 
if you haven't already experienced it, will. And, it, and to be honest, it's not really a case of will you, it is a case of, um, you know, when. Um, and their advice themselves is to put in place the company policy, um, put in place the appropriate technology, but ultimately to train your staff. There's only so much we can do from an IT function, whether that's CMI um, or internal IT stuff, there is only so much that we can do, that hardware can do, that software can do. Um, if we don't train our staff, um, then you know that ultimately is the is the gateway in. And just to you know, refer back to that story I, I mentioned earlier, thirty thousand pound. The only reason that happened wasn't because they didn't have they hadn't invested in the right technology um, and they didn't have modern security technology in place. It was the fact that they hadn't made their staff aware, they weren't consistently training them. Um, and so the particular you know, individual involved just wasn't aware of the signs to look for. Um, and, and that was the outcome. So, you know, final slide to me before I, before I pass over is, um, again, just some, some stats here, um, just to demonstrate that, you know, with consistent training over time, um, you will see, you know, phishing um, attacks um, tail off. So, you know, the, the chart here on, on the right um, is, is shown two aspects, which Jordan's going to refer to in, in a second. We have, you know, phishing simulations are where, um, you know, we simulate the sending of um, phishing emails to people's mailboxes. Um, but that can be complemented with security awareness training, which are very short you know, videos. But you can see that, you know, when, when the two are used together um, over time, you know, you can get down to as low as, um, you know, only 1% um, fish rates, you know, from a starting point, you can see they're close, close to 30%. Um, I, I guess the figures are a little less important. It's about the trend and it really does back up the fact that, um, you know, having this consistent training over a period of time um, will help. Um, these figures aren't related to our clients per se. These are from um, InfoSec, you know, broad client base. You can see there it's talking about a million, million security users. Great. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to pass over to Jordan. What I um, I should have mentioned at the start, actually. So apologies for not doing so. But um, if there are any questions throughout this session, um, feel free to use the uh, sort of question um, app in 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 the um, dashboard you'll have. Um, I'll keep an eye on any questions that do come through as Jordan's running through the demo and I'll, 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 I'll sort of interject Jordan and, and try and get some of those covered as we can. We may not get to cover them all, um, in which case if I don't, um, then you've got a commitment from me that I will make sure we get back to you with, with the answer to your, to your questions. Excellent, so let me just um, fire over to Jordan. I just need to change the presenter um, and then we shall pass over to Jordan. Sounds good. Okay. Just wait for Jordan to share his screen. Should be able to see the IQ dashboard, correct? Perfect. Yes, we can. Yes. Thanks. Awesome. Well, Graham, really appreciate the insight there and the background to all of this. Um, what I'm going to be going through next for everyone on the call is a look into the IQ platform, uh, but really a look into what you know the users are gonna experience from a phishing and then from a training standpoint. Uh, like you know, I said, we use this tool with thousands of clients uh, to really help them better understand the types of attacks that are out there and the vulnerabilities that they have and then to help reinforce you know, what they're learning through monthly engagement, uh, whether that be working through phishing emails that are sent or working through some of the training that we have in the platform as, as well. I uh, do, do wanna highlight uh, something on our main dashboard here. So we do have these core behaviors. Uh, these core behaviors align to our National Institute for Standard and Technology. And really all this is, is we look for these nine core behaviors to be trained every single year, year over year. You know, it's really that we want you to have a good concept of all of these as you're working through your day-to-day -day interaction. So I'm gonna start over on the phishing side. Uh, so we have quite a bit of different phishing templates in here, uh, right ranging from maybe some more localized templates to, you know, random maybe a, a Netflix uh, one as well that we can send out uh, that are going to 
possibly uh, interact with the users. So I want to show you from uh, a quick standpoint kind of what the user sees and then go into a little bit of the details for each of the phishing templates. So as we look at what an example would be, so here's what one of our Office 365 templates would look like. Uh, there are quite a bit of variables used. So things where you're seeing InfoSec IQ are going to be more tailored to your organization, right? Again, we're not doing this to trick people. We're not doing this to say, I got you, but we do want to present real life examples. So things like those, those variables and making it a little more tailored do help in that. So this one happens to be a drive-by attack. Uh, so when they click that login here to change their password, they would be prompted to what looks like a login page, right? A lot of attackers will use the same strategy in order to capture credentials and then log back into your systems. So let's say somebody did you know, put in uh, their username and password, hit next so they would sign in. They're gonna be prompted with a unique education asset. So this is one of them. Um, and I really like some of these that are more short and to the point, right? As somebody gets fished, uh, they might not be too thrilled about it, right? So we want to give them something easy that they can take away from, right? Hey, I was about to put in my password and, you know, a, a quick email from IT uh, might, you know, be something that is malicious. Um, and especially when we think to company policy, you know, IT is probably not going to reach out to, you know, have you change your password directly. They're going to work with you on that a little more closer. So um, since we do want monthly engagement, you know, we, we do really focus on uh, a lot of this content being more tailored month to month. And we do have some great pre-built plans that we're using with um, a lot of the CMI clients as well to, to help with that, right? To, to help with the monthly phishing emails going out. Uh, if I show another example here of what would be malware. So we see you know another example with Google Drive and click here to sign in. And then again, Right, a, a little different education asset here, um, but again, trying to call attention to what they should have picked up on uh, for that given event. I do want to go into the library just to give you a little bit um, of, of insight into some of the, uh, I call them teachable moments, right? So these are really the ways that your learners should be picking up on some of these emails. Uh, if we go into, I had one picked out right here. So if we go into what looks like an Office 365 template, um, you know, our biggest teachable moments and the biggest areas for people to pick up on are, you know, hey, hover over the from name that is coming into that email and verify the email address. So we are going to have some that are harder and some that are a little easier as well, uh, but there are quite a bit of domains that we can choose from and that will be used in the campaigns. Again, this isn't supposed to be an I got you tool, so I'm not looking to say, you know, at Microsoft.com, right? We're, I'm, I'm not looking to put that exact one in there because that's not realistic. Um, you know, they are going to have a different domain or like this one, something a little close that if you're reading it too quick, you know, you might just think it's real. Uh, this one happens to be data entry template. So as I'd mentioned, that's gonna follow on to that next login page where they would ultimately be presented with some type of education. For our drive-by attacks, I like to go over this just as far as the links that people can hover over, right? That's another big teachable moment is, you know, hey, if there's any links in there, hover over it to make sure that it's gonna take you where you think it should, you know, and, and that it looks safe. So this is fully customizable as well. Uh, something a little harder I do find is, is matching those, right? The from name in that fishy domain, because then they're the same as far as both domains go. Uh, so if we do want to make it a little easier, we can as well and put a different uh, domain for the link that they are hovering over. Uh, each template is going to have a unique education piece like I had mentioned uh, prior and showed. So um, like I said, meant, meant to help the learner understand what they are seeing a little better. So that is the main pieces for the phishing in 
the platform. Uh, I'll move over onto the aware ed side. So this is going to be more of the educational training that is provided to users. Um, if I pop into just the content library, um, we'll be seeing quite a bit of different modules here to use. Uh, again, we do have a few pre pre-built programs. Um, we are going to be showing one here near the end of the webinar, uh, just a little taste um, of one of them that we have. Ultimately, you know, this, this can be customized if, if needed, um, but so quite a bit of different areas that we can help out with as far as your training goes. Um, I do want to show a little bit more about how that aware ed training works. So there are emails that go out um, to each of the users, right, to help them get into their training. Um, and what that is going to look like is a learner dashboard. So when they click on that email and they follow on to their training, this is an example of what, of what they would see. So they're going to be able to see their coursework that is either currently past due uh, or new, right? Uh, we just kicked it off here at the beginning of the month. They'll get some insight into phishing. Um, so the emails that they have been sent, uh, what actions they have taken on those emails. And this also makes a great conversation piece down the road as well. You know, if you have people that aren't taking training, you have people that are getting fished a lot, you know, you can leverage, leverage this dashboard in your conversations with them just to try and help bring them up to speed, right? Or shed some light on some areas of improvement for them. So, and then they are able to follow on to the training. And then we also do have uh, assessments that can be used as well within the training. So I do want to touch on a little bit of reporting as well, uh, just so you understand what, what this can look like and then kind of what to expect as far as the campaigns go. So uh, there are going to be normally multiple emails going out over the course of a month to each learner completely random. So what this can look like is, you know, just per email, uh, the email that they were fished on, and then that final action that was actually taken. So there's a few different ways that we present this. Um, at, at a very high level standpoint, um, we produce this as response results. So something that can be shared with the entire organization, because uh, I'm a big fan of not singling anybody out for this stuff, right? Uh, it's more so to sh shed light on the whole organization, not a given individual. If you're going to do that, right, that can obviously be done on a one-on-one -on -one setting. So areas like this, you know, the, our, our response results are great to show to the entire organization. Again, helping them understand what happened in that campaign. Uh, we do have some, some other areas of this report as well. And then we get down to one of my favorite as well, the template performance. We're going to be able to draw some conclusions from here. Um, right. Let's say you don't use Google uh, as far as anything that would need a password reset. Right. That this would be something to call out that you know, hey, we don't use this service. Be be careful when you're looking at your inbox. You know, there are a lot of different uh, attacks that could come, and sometimes you can understand them uh, just by you know thinking a little bit. Right. Hey, we don't use this service. I probably shouldn't be getting this type of email. So. That is from the phishing side. Um, some automatic reports that we do send out to clients um, that I would want to touch on as well are going to be a list of those users that have been phished. Um, so we can have a better idea of, right, again, who they were, um, what template they were phished on, and then we can get some understanding of the, the time to in between these emails. Right, so that's scheduled when that email actually went out and then occurred is obviously when that fished action happened. So we can see some, they might have a few hours in between, might have a few minutes, uh, right? But again, this is gonna be a super helpful report that uh, is automated and sent out to the majority of the clients every Monday, just so that you can keep up uh, with those users that have been fished. From the aware ed standpoint, right, this is going to be a little more straightforward in reporting as, as as how I think about it, right? Really, did you did you do the the training? Uh, are you not started, or uh, you know, are you in progress with that training? 
So again, there are going to be emails going out uh, right away for an enrollment. There's going to be reminder emails at a frequency of usually every three days over a given month to help people get into that training, right? Um, you know, we do want to be a little helpful uh, with getting those reminders, but obviously not too overbearing um, and not like sending those each, each day. So a lot of times for uh, aware ed training, uh, we're really just using some of the training module performance uh, in the reporting as well, uh, just showing right kind of where where everyone landed within a given module, let's say. Um, and then I'll show you the other automated report that we use a lot. So again, like I had mentioned, you know who's who's completed, who's in progress, and who is not started. Um, again, this can be automated and sent every Monday. Sometimes I use this as a short list, so I'll, uh, I'll take off those that are complete and really just want to provide a weekly email of those that are in progress and not started. So either we can hand those out to other management, right? We can uh, engage with those learners to try and help them complete their training in a timely manner. So as far as the... Uh, platform goes. Um, Graham, I'm not sure if there's any questions I can kind of answer before we head into showing that preview of the module. Okay, yeah, thanks, Jordan. Uh, there's a, well, one question, well, there's a couple of questions, but all actually around the, the same thing. So obviously, Jordan, as you were running through lots of screens there um, with lots <laughs> of options and templates, um, you know, the question is really revolving around, you know, did do the clients need to do that or do, do we from a CMI perspective say, so, I mean, I, I can answer that very, very clearly, um, you know, our, our, our default service is, um, as Jordan alluded to, there are sort of a, a, a defined package that we've put together with Jordan's help. Um, There's a 12 month program that we we make sure cover those um, you know, those nine areas that, that Jordan talked across um, across that period. So we we effectively do you know all the heavy lifting. Um, you know we we get we get all your, your staff um, set up in the system. Um, email addresses imported. Um, we set you up on the 12 month program. Um, and you know with the with the regular reporting that's required who, who that reporting should go to and when um, and effectively hit the hit the go button. Um, and and it's done, uh, and effectively your your staff are are enrolled um, and receiving their training, uh, and and we we keep an eye on that for you, um, and obviously you you will receive the reports as well. So if you've got any particular concerns, um, whether that's general or with a particular user maybe, um, then then we're there to to assist you with that as well. Um, we can um, we can bespoke the service. Um, we. We prefer not to because it's it's simpler and easier um, if, if we and, and ultimately it's more cost effective if we can provide it on on that sort of defined plan. But if, for example, if there's a particular um, I don't know, email template or service that maybe is really relevant to your business, your industry, and we'd really like to get something like that into the plan, um, then, then we can do so I'm more than happy to, to talk with you on that. Um, so yeah, I think that that probably covers the questions, um, Jordan. So shall I shall I get the the the, the video rolling? Um, I yes, I just have to change yeah. presenter back to you. Yeah, if you change back to me. Um, so this is really uh, everybody. This is just intended to be um, a sort of an insight into um, this. Uh, there's a new series of of videos that, that are being launched um, that. That we um, that we will be bringing. So it, it's more intended to show you the style of of the of the videos and the engagement um, web, um, videos that we'll be using. So let me kick that off. It's about a minute long. Um, I'll probably stop it after half a minute, half a minute or so, just for for the sake of time. Just trying to give you an idea of the type of style of video. Let me get that running.
great, thank you. I should all be back to my uh, slide deck here now. So yeah, thanks, Jordan. Um, I hope that was useful to everybody. Um, again, that that last uh, you know, short video was really just intended to to show you the style really of, of many of the videos that you know when when video is used um, in the um, the awareness training. Um, again, sort of fun, lively, uplifting, um, you know, sort of typically cartoon type type stuff, some some real life um, video stuff, but um, it, it, it is um, intended to be engaging. Um, you know, I get a lot of questions, um, in fact, I can see one coming through now, um, concerned about the length of videos and the length of training and that being a distraction to ultimately what, what um, your, your, your staff, your employees jobs are. So we're, we're very conscious of that. And those videos are kept to, you know, short, sharp, um, snappy um, to make sure they actually get, get watched. Great, so uh, a couple of final slides really from myself. Um, and it's really just to give you an idea of, of, of the cost, um, some extra sort of useful resources that will be useful for you. Um, and, and then we'll, we'll move on from there. So um, the cost, you know, it's really simple. Um, as I say, it's a subscription service um, and effectively it's just charged at two pound per user per month. Um, and yeah, the obvious thing here, you know, from my perspective, you know, I know the 30,000 pound story I referred to earlier, um, you know, is, I was going to say an extreme example, it, it's far from the only example um, that, that, that I've heard of, not necessarily within our client base, but that we've heard of. Um, so, you know, it, it's less than the cost, uh, coster, it's less than the cost of a coffee, that's a hard thing to say, um, um, each month. So, again, just trying to provoke you into thinking, you know, is, is this something we really can't afford, we shouldn't be doing, just again, that, that, that risk versus reward um, equation. So. Um, if, if it is something you're interested in, um, then <clears throat> please let us know. Um, I'll give you my contact details at the end, but of course you've got your um, account managers um, at our end. They'll be more than happy to, to help um, talk you through any questions you've, you've got. So um, a couple of the useful resources, I mentioned the Cybersecurity Centre earlier. Um, so, you know, their, their, their website is, is very good um, and you've got the, the usual um, gov.uk. Gov site um, and across the two there's lots of lots of useful content um, you know we try from the CMI perspective to make sure that we um, through our blogs you know the monthly newsletters webinars like this um, keep you updated informed um, of, of, of what you should be thinking about not only from a security perspective um, but equally you know there you know there are lots of useful resources so if you're if you're interested in taking a look, I um, would well recommend that you you take a look at those um, sites too. Um, and then finally, really, just to let you know, you know, we've we've got a number of webinars um, that we've run in the past, um, so we've got recorded versions of those. Um, so they're all available on our website. Um, if you go to newcmi.com/events, um, they'll be there. The recording of this session will be available there um, later today, certainly by tomorrow. Um, for those that want to and really just to um, let you know again that you know this time next month I just need to confirm the date um, with our with our telephony partner um, next month the webinar will be on um, you know using telephony integrated with Microsoft Teams many of us are taking the move into Microsoft Teams driven by COVID um, but how do you actually integrate your telephone system directly into Teams? So we'll be we'll be covering that um, with our partner 8x8 next month. Um, so as usual, confirm the dates for that and registration links. Um, probably in a sort of a couple of weeks from now. Uh, so finally, Jordan, really thank you for taking the time um, to, to join us. Um, Jordan, I, I forgot to mention, is, is out in the States. So it was, I think, about half past seven um, <laughs> morning time for you, wasn't it? But after a long weekend, it was Labor Day over in the States yesterday. So um, appreciate you taking the time to, to you yeah, know, not so much get up early, but to join us early on the first day back for your week. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I always enjoy going through it. Uh, definitely share the same passion, right? As far as doing this to, to help people, um, just because some people don't don't know. So I'd rather provide the education than, uh, you know, kind of just assume that everyone knows. Yeah, excellent, perfect. Okay, well, like said, thanks again, um, everybody. I shall make sure that we get that um, recording available um, on um, ucmicom slash events, um, certainly by tomorrow, um, and again, got my contact details there um, if that's easy and I can get you in contact with the right people um, at, at our end uh, although I'm sure most of you will be aware of uh, who, who, who your right contact is whether that be Sam, Jono, Paul, 
Pete or Ollie. Um, yeah, I'm sure those names will resonate for those of you um, who work with them. Great. Um, I shall leave you to your days. Thank you for joining. Thank you.